Let the record show that it is Tuesday, December 8th at 2.35, and we are about to open our facilities com committee meeting. And uh, at this time, I would like to turn this over to our executive director, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Loeffler. Um, as is typical, I want to go through an update on uh, three things relative to the Ogdensburg Airport. Uh, first, we'll talk about the land side, then we'll talk about the uh, I'm sorry, we'll talk about the air side, then the land side, then the terminal. On the air side, uh, Route 68 relocation is uh, going well. They're actually running a, a little bit ahead of schedule right now due to the weather. Um, since the last time we've met, there's been an additional 700 trucks of stone material that have come in. Or no, I'm sorry, 1,052 trucks have come inbound um, to the new Route 68 portion and excavated trucks, an additional 700 trucks have gone out to the, uh, to the city. Um, project is on track, on schedule, on budget at this point. There were a couple of items that we talked about at the meeting. One was a change order that's before you today. Um, another is the threat of utilities. We have utilities that are starting to threaten the project because they've not committed to final design. We're working on that. And um, shut down right now for winter shutdown is scheduled to be the 24th of December. Any questions or anything, <coughs> anything on the land side of the, I'm sorry, on the air side of the project? Well, I think the electrical and some of the other components that even though Marcy's done, some other parts of the project will still be ongoing. Am I correct in that, Bill? Yeah, they'll uh, continue with their earthwork as, as long as they can. They'll get most of that finished up that's on the um, east side of existing 68. Um, they'll have all the stone in for the new road, um, and then they'll, they'll have to shut down their operation because there's simply nothing left for them to do. Uh, they'll have subcontractors working, getting the, as many of the new utility <coughs> infrastructure in place as they can. Um, and uh, the uh, actually the and we'll touch on it here in a second. The, uh, the tree clearing guys will be finishing up here shortly. Excellent. Uh, the wording that I heard today was April first is the scheduled start back time. Yeah, to keep them on schedule. They will be starting. Uh, it's planned for April first. That keeps them on schedule for the the 280 calendar days that are included in the contract work work calendar days um, uh, targeting November 1st of next year for substantial completion. So. The, uh, the change order, what was that due to? Was it something that... Well, uh, why don't we jump right into it and uh, talk about it. Go ahead and pull it up here. And you've got a hard copy in front of you as well. There are a couple things on this uh, uh, change order. And specifically, they deal with things that are um, from the terminal project that are being pulled over to the, um, uh, air, the air side of the project, correct? Big picture. Yeah, the, the runway project, um, basically moving some stuff that would have been done with the terminal um, into the contract with Mar with Marcy so that they can actually get a jump on them before uh, the bad weather hits and um, some of them are for putting pipe underneath uh, the access drive that goes adjacent to the expanded terminal building which is in Marcy's contract um, but they can get those pipes installed underneath that road before they um, button it up for the winter. Um, just trying to get a jump on some things that Quite frankly, they should. We don't want to tear up an, uh, uh, a road that they've put in, so that we can put a service into the new terminal building, stuff like that. So let, let me ask this question. And again, we haven't had a chance to talk on this particular issue, but we're taking something from you're you're taking from the terminal project and adding to the air project. Big picture is what's yes. going on here, and that makes sense because you've got the company that has the excavators, so on and so forth, there mobilized and and put the pipe in the ground. My question is on the terminal side, uh, when you're taking something from the terminal project and moving it to the air side of the project, are we doing a correspondent, corresponding adjustment on the terminal project? Because if we aren't doing that, 
I if we aren't doing that, how does the contractor that's uh, successfully awarded the terminal project, how do they know that's already been done or in, in the work? I mean, what's the linkage there? To do that? Well, the, the, the plans for the terminal building were actually adjusted to show the, um, the work that's being done by Marcy. Okay. So, so the so plans that they actually bid on are actually this one show needed. work by others. Oh, so it never got in the right. correct. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So there's no money amount in that bid that's right. going to reflect back to this. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So right. there's not a chance of repaying for some yeah. choice then. It's our still our dime though, right? Yeah. Still on our dime. So yes, this, I can understand why, but I... Uh, yeah, it was non-AIP eligible under the terminal project, and it's non-AIP eligible under the the uh, airside project. Right. Right. Yeah. So this was all done before the bids went out to, for the terminal? Well, the um, the actual, a lot of this work has not been done no, yet, that's work, but, but the, the coordination and um, the getting, money and all getting that prices all and stuff from Marcy, um, yeah, switching it over to their contract and taking it out of the terminal, yes. How much did we put in, our, in the contingency fund for that? Did we have a contingency fund? We did, didn't we? No, because... The, um, not in the terminal. Not yeah. in the terminal because it was all coming from us. No, I mean on the on the the air end of it. Was there any contingency? There is in the there is a contingency in here on the. There is, but I don't recall what it is. Do you know about? You mean on um, the, there is a contingency? Contingency, I think, built into the parking lot. I don't know what that specific number is, but we also um, when we bid, particularly the FAA eligible items, there is. There's some tolerances and stuff in there where we bid a certain material at a full tolerance. You know, if there's a half-inch tolerance on the asphalt, we bid it based on that full half-inch being utilized, thinking that it probably won't get utilized. But that way, it's built into your grant already, and we aren't going back and okay. asking for additional money. All right. So what this does specifically, it installs a two-inch coil pipe. As you can see there, it installs 8-inch uh, water pipe, it installs 8-inch uh, sewer pipe, and it relocates a uh, propane tank, and there's additional details in there specifically what it does. Okay. I'll make a motion that we move it to the full board. You do. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, can I make a comment? I, I just yeah. want to make. I'm ready to second this, but I'm just going to. Okay, I want to make something absolutely clear here. This isn't extra work. This is work that was going to be done under the other contract, move from contract A to contract B. Yes. That's all that's going here. We aren't looking at sixty-seven thousand dollars in new costs here. No. Okay. That's right. When you had the terminal overall cost, that sixty or seventy it might have shown up, and it might have shown up higher. It could okay. be lower, but. You'd have 70 in the approval on the uh, terminal building. Right. Okay. I just want to be crystal clear that that's what it is. Yeah, we haven't added anything additional other than some of the pipe sizes and those things were identified in the final design of the terminal building. They may not have been available to bid to when Marcy bid their project. Therefore, that's why they're coming in at this stage. Okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out, uh, well, not figure out, is, is really the difference of a change order or a new cost that maybe should be bidded out. But so this is really a change order that does not have to be bidded out. Correct. Okay, yes. and that's right. what... Yeah, and, and if we thought that the prices were coming in outrageous, we probably would have put it back in the other package, although that would have been some additional coordination there. Well, obviously, the people here on site, it's probably very, very, right. uh, very yeah. competitive no, I, price I think here. they've given us good prices. A very competitive price. That being said, uh, uh, I'll second that. Okay. So we'll move that, move that, move that to the full board. board. Or, okay. Um, so generally, we do the um, air side. I'm sorry. I'll get it right one of these times. The... Uh, uh, air side, the land side, and then the terminal. So we talked about the air side of the project. On the land side of the project, the term, the parking lot um, seems to be going along pretty well. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, the only issue that's uh, come up has really been addressed, and that's a conversation with Cape Air. 
or with the additional um, uh, parking spaces that are needed. The uh, road has been set up for winter conditions with the uh, reflectors there, so that way during overflow parking periods, people can park and it's not a problem. Um, I do need to get out and talk with the Cape Air, the local manager, because they're one step behind in the information. I'll do that just as soon as I'm able. And um, I think the contractor is planning on bringing in some additional stone to create a couple of new spots over there temporary during the, the winter months. Um, any questions on the, on the parking? Well, one of the things that I, I, I talked about today was the uh, having an electrical charging station, whatever, to see exactly what location that may be. That was something we didn't really consider at the time, am I correct? Yeah. And that's something that I just kind of researched this weekend was just reading some articles on airport uh, upgrades and stuff, and that's what they're adding to airports. And so uh, I'm not sure how many stations. I know this will be discussed further a little bit. But we're also in the infant stages here where to do it now. If you're going to put a conduit or type of thing change you got to make, let's make it now before you have to. We don't want to tear up any pavement or stuff for later on. So I know the bill's going to be looking at that. Yeah, I think we got a little time. But, um, I'll get the electrical folks on looking at, you know, whether or not we can accommodate any, you know, if they're, we would identify some spaces maybe for some charging stations um, and whether or not we could accommodate that in existing conduit or if there's additional conduit that we may have to run in the spring yeah. before we put down any pavements or those types of things. So, Or alternatively, if it's attached to the building. Exactly. I mean, that may be the other, other option there, too. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. On the, uh, any, any other questions on the parking lot side? Um, the only th other thing I would add is we've got the parking RFP out there and uh, we've got the responses. I think uh, the questions need to be submitted by mid-December, it's like 15th, 17th, something like that. And then we've got some responses and then... Uh, I've got some questions. Uh, I have received some questions and uh, they would like to come and look. So uh, I think we've got to... I think we should accommodate that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, the uh, terminal side of the project, the terminal side of the project is, uh, as you know, out, uh, out to bid. Bids were opened. Um, preliminary awards, we'll need to talk about that and do the approval of the awards at the next meeting. And I think the start date on that project is January 3rd, I think. I'm not positive on those dates. I've got too many dates running around my head here at the, at the current time. But uh, that is currently on schedule uh, right now. Chris has done all the work behind the scenes to do that. Um, the engineer has uh, evaluated the bids, uh, and they should be right here under approval of contracts for the past material facility. So I know he said he was going. To yeah, there's a recommendation. Yeah. Recommendation there, including the engineer's recommendation. Further. Mm -hmm. So, uh, based on based on the engineer's recommendation on the uh, general construction side, <coughs> it would be your name at uh, 2.834 200. Uh, plumbing would be Norwood Plumbing at 126,700. Hyde Stone under HVAC for 238,000, and the electrical um, Dow Electric is uh, 441,069. Uh, based on the engineer's input, um, the review of the bids, and then the staff's review, we recommend uh, approval uh, award of these contracts. Wade, can I just ask one question? I haven't asked yet. It's my job. What, what did you hear back from Dow on why they were so low? I don't know. That was my question. <coughs> um, to be perfect, I, I don't know the answer. I, I heard that they had everything in there, I, and that's all I heard, but I didn't. And they don't have to. They don't have to explain it. But the, all they basically they gave you the assurance that nothing there was no omissions on that. Yeah, I, I know under the review of the bids that um, everybody is given an opportunity to review their bid, make sure that they had everything in there, and um, that was the. I just heard a general thing that, that, that yeah. they were okay, but I didn't hear, you know, um, any detailed discussion of why that was lower. I just wanted to ask. Uh, specifically, where are the locations of each of these companies? I mean, Their names in Plattsburgh, 
Your, your, your name is Plattsburgh? Yeah. Well, Plattsburgh or Utica. And then Norwood's Norwood Plumbing. High Mechanicals is in Potsdam and Watertown. And Dow Electric is in Malone. And then they have a, everything electric is there in Potsdam, is their supplier part. Okay. So you got Malone, Watertown, <coughs> Potsdam, Norwood, and Plattsburgh. Okay. I mean, obviously, we like local people to, mm -hmm. uh, to win these bids. Yeah. Yeah. We only have one local company bid, though, really. Yeah, Alan Salmon. Yeah. You know. Everything was found to be in order okay. and uh, recommend approval. All right, I'll move that. Okay, I'll second it. Move that to the <coughs> full board for approval. Um, the other thing we need to take care of under the, uh, the uh, passenger terminal is uh, with the three point, uh, is it three point six or three point three six million dollar project? I don't recall which. We need to have a construction inspection agreement uh, with uh, McFarland Johnson for that. Um, I literally just got this. It looks like this agreement is for four hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. It's going to be my recommendation to um, move this to the board. Um, once everything is, uh, once everything has been reviewed, that's not included in. No, it's not. It's not included in the overall bid price. So this is going to be another half million dollars above the three point whatever for the terminal. Yeah, that's correct. Let me add the pastor terminal numbers here together <coughs> real quick, just so I don't uh, want to give you wrong information. So the, uh, the pasture terminal for the construction, the plumbing, the HVAC, and the electrical, that totals uh, $3.64 million for that. Construction inspection um, agree agreement would be for $453,792.36. That's included in the 3.64? That is not included. That is this not is in included. addition to Wow. So if you want to put that together with the terminal. Well, and the, the terminal project excluding design would be $4 million, 4.1 uh, round numbers. <coughs> what was our original estimate? We were, I mean, obviously, we don't know what it is until you bid it out. But uh, well, the terminal came in line with expectations at 3.63. Yeah. I think when it first started, it was down around 3.3, 3, was it? 2, something like yeah, that. 2 to 3. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, that doesn't count to. So, so this is just going to be for an inspector for the terminal only. I Does it? I need to review this, but this is construction, <coughs> administration, and inspection. Yeah, there's. There's an awful lot of backroom stuff that goes good. with that. Exhibit B shows these bit. It's full-time inspections. There's all the shop drawing reviews that go along with that. The administration, the you see that? testing. Oh, you've got material testing. Yeah. Cool. The project pulls out. Here's and the LST shed. New York, the building code now requires a certain amount so of special there. inspections. There's um, steel inspection. Right. There is sprinkler inspection, and one more. Mm -hmm. there is what was that? Yeah, the point <coughs> no. So McFarland will be here at the board meeting to um, explain specifically. Yeah. Um, I think mean, Chris Kopeck uh, Chris Kopeck and or Jeff Wood are going to be here. No. Once we get all down to that runway itself, are we looking at a at another proposal from McFarland to? Oversee the runway and all that no. stuff. No, this should be the That's last one because everything else, the construction administration uh, portions for all the other parts of the project have already been approved as we've been going along. The terminal has been running behind everything else, mm -hmm. um, and that's why we are where we are because they're two separate projects. Let me ask this 
and this is not a critical of McFarland anybody, but it's, it's about a process and whatever. There's some phase in this, whatever, the design, whatever. Do we have to take McFarland at this point in time, or could we have to? You're not obligated to. Um, it's our recommendation that you do this in the best interest of the authority. Oh, I, I understand all that. But the, um, because McFarland is the airport engineer. Um, also, because when you look at this on a whole project basis, um, the MWBE components are met when you look at it on an entire project basis. Uh, that makes sense for us to do. Sam? Ideal world, if we had two years to do this, I'd say yes, let's go ahead and contact both engineering firms, right. talk with them, yeah. and see. But we just don't have that luxury. Um, on a project this big, generally, like what I look for in yeah. construction inspection, if they if their QC and QA are a little independent, in other words, which I've seen with McFarland, um, in some ways you don't want two firms because they can make the job. You can get heads budding, and you don't get a whole um, you don't get a whole cohesive thing, and it can drag the job out. In other words, they can look at something and say, "Well, this is how we design it." Then you get contractors in between, and you you tend to get a lot of friction. So we 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 just kind of look for if the firms can keep their inspections separate from some of their engineering, so that um, they're not afraid to call out a bad something just got overlooked yeah. or something like that. That's that's just my view of it, and that's kind of how we've I done agree. that. Well, what I what I understand this is just and I'm trying to learn. Obviously, you only learn to do this once. But as as I read, there's numerous airport projects where there's two or three engineers doing all sorts of work together, and a major major airport, whatever. Not one uh, organization or office doing the same thing, whatever. This project here, as I understand, the continuity of what needs to be done. And that's okay, but I also have to answer, ask that question to the people who are watching this on TV, or whatever that I do, my due diligence to ask those type of questions to see exactly where we're going to go next. If somebody said you should have looked at this process differently and not asked the question, I, I look like a fool here. And I mean, to me, as we t we've all realized what we're doing, this is serious stuff, and it needs to be done the right way, the best way with the best know-how and to meet our deadline. And of course what you just said, MWBE is another element of, of all this procurement type of things that, that we got to go through. I mean, and of course I go back to you, Bill McFarland, I have no disagreement or any, any issues whatever whatsoever in regards to what, what your organization or uh, business has done <coughs> for us. I mean, uh, it's it's a high accolade that I have to say. But it, to me, is I want to ask that question: Is is there another alternative at any time? Because we've already had been burnt where I would have said somewhere in a project before. Whoa, I don't I don't agree what we're doing here. I, I think I think doing. the other thing to understand with both this agreement and the agreement that we have on the runway project is that they're both set up as cost plus fixed fee. So that we're tracking our costs and we're billing you only for the costs that we incur. Um, we don't get this money regardless. We're going to charge you. This is our best estimate on what we think it's it's going to be. Uh, we hope it comes in a little bit less than that. But um, we are only our invoices to you have detailed outlines of every hour that gets charged against the job, so that you can audit every single invoice as they come in. Well, I, I like to think this. I mean, and uh, I, I don't know your business and your charging rates and how. I, I know everybody gets charged something who's involved in the project. And I, I obviously I like to say you've been fair and you don't do that, whatever. I, I'd hope you sharpened your pencil as much as possible to do what you can do. I mean, <coughs> I, I know that uh, McFarland and Johnson has, uh, has an emotional in interest in this project. It's something that's so unique. To make this happen for a little small air or town or you know in this area to make something this big happen, mm -hmm. and so that's the other element that's involved here. So, I mean that's what we have to do. We have to do all the things that you know that uh, makes this project move forward. So. Well, I was going to say the same thing, Mr. Chairman. That uh, you know this is a holiday spirit, and uh, maybe maybe <laughs> Thursday we can get them to sharpen that pencil just a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sure, but yeah. Now, back when we uh, back when we started this, one of the questions I asked was, 
what is all of this going to, what is this portion going to cost? And this was when it was a smaller project. When it was a, when the terminal project was a smaller project than it is now, the cost was going to be about three hundred thousand dollars. It was going to be north of three hundred thousand. So this coming in at four fifty three, while well, it's a little higher than I originally expected, um, it is. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't seem that out of line. Uh, one of the things I did in between things, again, I just got this, uh, I think, at uh, 12.30 today, but I did reach out to Jeff Wood and Chris Kopech at uh, McFarland Johnson. Obviously, they can speak for themselves on Thursday, but um, I asked the question, I said, is, I'm assuming this grew from the $300,000 estimate due to the project growth. Um, the answer I got back from Jeff Wood is the cost is driven by the duration of the project and the extensive coordination that will be required with all of the stakeholders. We're proposing this as a cost plus agreement so that if things go up, uh, think so, let me try to start that one over. We're proposing this as a cost plus agreement so that if things go swimmingly, you'll save money. Um, and my response was the amount may generate some discussion, the amount may generate some discussion Glad you'll be there Thursday. <laughs> so, so well, that's, well, that's a big part of it. I mean, to yeah. me, is uh, monitoring. When we watch, when you don't monitor something, it can get out of control. I mean, so and we just realized that with Lyle on this project here on the uh, on the airport side, having somebody from your side there to support it and watch it, and uh, we knew, we know, actually, we know that that's a different cost than trying to do it our way before. We can't afford to get burnt like we did before. Ever. <coughs> so, nothing negative about that, but that's uh, where we're at. Um, well, I, I think that's. Um, I'll, I'll move it to the full board. I mean, I'll we'll second it. Yeah. So, again, saying keep working on it. <laughs> keep working on it. You see, you see the thing, you see the thing here. Bill, I'm always, I'm always looking for a deal. The thing is, the thing is this. I mean, I mean, Wade just said something that it's really substantial. Think about it. If you thought you were going to spend three hundred thousand and you end up at four fifty, now I know we added things to the terminal building and we upscaled it and did some extra things, which in, in lieu of all that fall off. But to recover $150,000, you think of the percentage of what you thought you were, okay, is, is sometimes it's difficult to swallow. <coughs> How we make up $150,000 is, is one of the things that, because it's, it's on our ticket. All of it's on our ticket because we have responsibility to the federal government, everybody's involved in how we're going to recover it. So that's, that's what it comes down to. And I think we're just to add to that. I think we're a little bit more sensitive to it because this is a hundred percent of this dollar is our money. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, whether whether the money was yours or not, we don't, we don't anticipate that we would hand somebody a, an estimate for four hundred fifty thousand dollars without yeah. being able to stand up to a little scrutiny. You've been fair all along, so yeah, I'm not, yeah, not arguing. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, the next item we can. Um, I assume we can handle it in general session. Um, I don't think there's a need for executive session. And the reason I say that is I believe it went before the Shimon County Finance Committee yesterday. But uh, I haven't been in my office, so I don't know. Um, I believe it's been accepted, uh, but I'm not certain. As part of the uh, requirements of Allegiant Air, we need to have an Index B truck. Um, we have an Index A truck which is, that's the requirement for the type of aircraft that we're going to have uh, into the airport. We need to have an Index B truck so that we can get our operating certificate upgraded to uh, a Class 1 ARF Index B airport. And to do that, we need to have the truck here. We need to have it on our list and we need to have it there so we can check the box to send in the application for the upgrade form. Uh, we found one. Um, it's a sitting down night, uh, Elmira, New York. It's uh, designations a T12, the 1990 E1 Titan 4x4 ARF vehicle. And the offer we put forth on that, it was about to go out to uh, surplus uh, equipment. Um, we tried to come in just about where the local departments had in the past for the bidding. And that's why there was an offer put in at 52500 
I do not know if they have formally accepted it yet, but I believe that they have. And this will allow us to check the box, get the equipment here, um, and begin the process we need to do to get our operating certificate upgraded with the FAA for the Allegiant, uh, for the Allegiant flight. One thing I want to be crystal clear on, our previous engineer uh, told us, and they're absolutely correct, that our new truck would work for the upgrade of the airport and the upgrade of the class of the airport that we wanted to get to, which was an index A. Uh, what we found out through the process um, about two and a half years after we purchased the truck is that Allegiant requires an index B, our freight. So there's where that's what's driving this extra cost. It wasn't, we didn't get bad information from the previous engineer. Um, it's, you know, straightforward it is what it is. Well, let, let me ask this question. It, it's, maybe you know the answer, Steve, or whoever does. If I'm, I'll just pick an airline out of the, out of the hat here, and we'll just call it United. United has an A320. Could they ask for a different classification? Mm -hmm. Or just a plain, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, so an eight, what, what, well, there are I mean, we've got the same plane. Certain size jets dictate what you need for um, coverage. So it's not, it's, so it's the it's aircraft, the and it's not flying. the airline. There's the minimum re requirements, and there's also what the airlines require, and they're well, two different things. Okay, but depending so, on the. Well, that's what I'm saying is, so Airline United could ask if for. If they had an A320, more than likely we'd be covered under this. Well, but if, with, if, with our new, with the one we just right, purchased. Right, right. Purchase. And, okay. and, and with more than five flights a week, you, we have to go to an index B. But where Wade was talking about where we were covered, five or less, we could cover it with our truck. But for one thing, uh, Allegiant requires index B, so that goes right out the picture. Now, if another airline, United or somebody else, came in, we'd be covered on, as long as the jet was similar in size. They're all classified, and you can go. Uh, there's a on the FAA website. It tells you everything about what jets have to be covered under a certain side. That's right, Bill. Right? Yes. Yeah. And so, if they have a larger jet, it might go to C. Okay. Um, let me let me ask you this question because of, I mean, God help me, this never happened. But plane is coming in, and we have a landing issue, whatever it want to be, or whatever may happen. Could both rescue vehicles be available to be used in that particular situation? Yes. Okay. So that to me is, okay, so you got certified excellent backup, whatever, okay. Well, in um, emergency-wise, within the three minutes, our people or whoever's on duty would do it. And then for backup, you have the city, Parasagachi, right. and if you've got personnel, that they take that, they're already trained on our truck, all of the locals. Okay. So one way or another, we might take the bigger one, and five minutes later, they'd come and grab the other one, depending on timing. Okay. Now, what did you to just purchase that was I Senator don't. Richie helped him with? Wait, do you remember exactly? I don't know, the, I don't know the specific. I was just, uh, um, I just made a note here in the pad. I'd like to talk about that separate from this because I did get a call from one of the trustees. Well, we can talk about it now. Mm -hmm. I got a call from one of the trustees thanking us for the original donation of the old truck to the department and apologizing for not having any mention of the fact that we donated um, the truck that then they were able to trade for $45,000 credit on the new truck um, oh. that uh, was purchased. Oh. So, but, so will, we any, will we get any ink on that? <laughs> I, I doubt it. But, I doubt it. Well, know, it's, it's nice that they made the effort. I'll put it that way. So. Okay. So I'll make a motion we move this to the full board. I'm almost ready to. Um, I, I know when we looked at Fenton and some other trucks and stuff, I mean, I, you did your research, there's nothing... Nothing we could touch for the amount of money. I went and asked real numbers, and there weren't well, any... Some were further away, was Yeah, that and even matching... There were a couple I, 95s. I matched a 95 and a 92, similar in size, and they were talking somewhere between 150 and 300. And yeah, there are all uh, sorts of numbers. There are all sorts of well, yeah, and I, and I do Mark get up. the feeling from talking to a number of them that it's quite a racket. I don't mean it that way, but I think they decide how you know well, how deep are our, yeah how deep are our pockets because when I kind of said oh well we'll get back to you they've they've been on me just like a used car salesman on it, calling and used yeah. fire truck salesman yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I get the feeling. Uh, They'll, you know, they'll try to pin you to the highest price, and they'll they'll fly you down, 
and look at it, and I'm like, yeah. well, with that kind of cost in there, they must have something they can afford. That's how they yeah. they get it. Question I have next is the employment numbers we reached the ten thousand whatever. Now, am I clear in saying that we can ask for use that money toward a new truck? I heard that was correct. Every ten years, you can buy a new truck. Um, the art, but there are exceptions to that. Um, that money, that million dollars, comes to us two years after we meet the employment numbers. Right. So you're effectively what are we talking, talking about, about two money seventeen, two three years out. Yeah. Okay, two but I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not saying and, that. Well, and annually, your inspector would dictate that. They, our inspector was calling five years ago. That it was time to replace that. But if our two trucks meet inspection goals, and there's no issue with that, they will not write that on the report. Um, um, just be, you know, we're fine with that, even if it is ten years. So this truck here for fifty-two thousand dollars, it'll shoot the water as far as at the yeah. amount of pressure, Foam. fifteen hundred gallons, and yeah, all that stuff, right? and yeah. all those things. It'll do all those things. Yeah, that's the next B parts. The that's an last cars too, isn't it? Am I correct? Uh, uh, Titan. Titan. The Titan. Yeah. Those parts are all available and stuff for that one. I thought it was last cars. Why did they think different? Uh, probably because the new one they had was Nosh Oh, okay. Um, Are they sure they didn't misquote yeah, that the one? The E one, six hundred thousand for fifty-two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying about the employment money, but at the same time, when that comes, when we when we reach that level, we're going to have a wish list up there that we want to use that money for. I don't want to get. We already have a wish list. No, no, I, I, I don't want no, to get pressed. But there's some questions you that, asked that, to say we're we're yeah. Well, at least you know. put it on your list. You know exactly where to be when I want to be. I, I mean, to me. No, I just didn't want. Yeah. Well, there's one of the things too. I mean, when we're a real airport, I'm not. I shouldn't say it in that terms, but when we're a different class of airport, hopefully we'll have more money coming in the door to help support these yeah. things as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Full disclosure on this item: there may be some unknown uh, transport uh, transport costs to get this on a low boy and get it up here. Um, don't know what that is. And there's probably some additional costs associated with the uh, hoses and things that this truck will need once we get it on site. Well, I, I, I rode in it and I watched it perform and um, and actually I had a much higher number in my head to what you're going to buy this vehicle for. I mean, for the condition it was in and obviously it fits in the garage. That was the right length and all the stuff that whatever. So now I'll give you my second. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. A little bit okay. more. Yeah. I yeah. gotta breathe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to tell you the fire chief's getting ready to retire, so there's a position open if you're interested. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't think I can hold that hold today. The person they gotta hold on. Anything else? But I, you know, as we said, we need that. We need that to get to get that approval, and uh, you know, I'd really, I'd rather do that now than wait till the last minute and be running around doing, you know. Having ten thousand obstacles in our way, and yeah, the other thing we'll do too is um, um, we'll do a joint press release with Elmira and make sure that you know they get uh, they get credit, we get credit, all that kind of good stuff that yeah. goes with uh, municipality mm -hmm. to municipality transfers. So. Well, the reason, I, the reason I asked the question, I think Wade was just saying the same thing: as the business grows, whatever. I'm not saying we're going to be in Elmira and like that, whatever. But you looked in their uh, maintenance garage and the, the equipment that they had. Slow power removals and all the things was like, oh, yeah. oh my God! It was amazing what, what their uh, maintenance program and uh, safety program is, as they they put together. So, that being said, I, I, something went through my head. Steve, friction rating equipment. I've got it in the budget. Have you? Yeah. Total okay. Line okay. Unit. Yeah, you can see that. They have idea what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's a whole different ball game. I mean, it is whatever. So I mean, that's uh, uh, just just for the record, I think this price is very fair. Uh, you want the one that you know. I know that there's other people out there that charge more for the same thing. You know, like the used fire truck salesman, but I think this is a very fair price. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it works. Is. Do we got to put it on? Uh, oh, uh, very very good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. Because we are on camera. Yes. Uh, this would be a direct purchase in, in uh, exempting our procurement policy, exempting our MWB Eagles, 
in the best interest of the authority because this piece of equipment is needed for an FAA operational upgrade uh, certificate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So very important important is one of those variances then that we can... It, uh, no, exception to, it qualifies as an exception to our procurement policy okay. in the best interest of the authority. Well, okay. Thank you so much. I forgot about that. How are we doing? Anything else? No, sir. We'll beat this thing. Okay, we'll make a motion that we adjourn. And anybody want me to say second? <laughs> <laughs> I will say second. <laughs>